Hey everyone, thanks for watching. Last week we introduced my wife's new off-roader, a 1998 Land Rover Discovery 1 that we picked up off of eBay. When we picked her up, we knew that there was going to be some work in our future, but we really weren't quite sure to what extent. There were some obvious cosmetics and electrical issues, things like seat tears, intermittent window malfunctions, that sort of thing. The previous owner told us there was a power steering leak, which appeared to me to be getting tossed by the engine fan all over the place inside the engine bay. That being said, we were vigilant with the fluids, made sure everything was topped off, and stayed there during the six-hour drive from Huntington Beach back to Phoenix, and on our weekend trip to Sedona. However, as we are new to the Land Rover game, we felt taking it to get an expert opinion was the logical next step. Now, I'll admit, this is certainly something we should have done before we handed over the cash. We dropped her off at a local Land Rover independent specialist and my wife took the forerunner to work and later in the day I got a call. Hello? Hello, this is Jim from the Rover Shop. Your Rover is ready. Okay. You can come pick it up whenever you want. All right, I'll be down there in a little bit. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a great day. So, I put myself together, dispatched a neighbor, and prepared for another potential expensive adventure. I think she missed me. Mare's all right. Really. When I arrived, I was given a nondescript list of issues they had found. Some of them seemed like they needed more detail, so the owner of the shop came out and walked me through it. He actually even complimented me by saying this was the nicest Discovery one they had seen in a long time. That being said, there were some things that needed to be addressed. Some of them expected, some of them unexpected. And with that, I'm ready to share with you the list of everything that's wrong with my wife's Land Rover Discovery 1. Now, there are a lot of things on this list. Are we going to address everything on this list right away? Absolutely not. So let's fast forward to some of the less consequential items to get to the meat of it all. Cruise control hoses. Unknown age of coolant hoses. Left rear stub axle leak. Left front stub axle leak. Rear axle ball joint. Rear sway bar bushings. Power steering high pressure hose. Engine mount sagging. Rear muffler rotten. Rear step return strut loose. Right lamp guard missing. No air conditioning. Driver seat trim. Passenger seat trim and switches. Rear windows intermittent operation. Front sunroof shade clip broken. Front sunroof leaking. Windshield sprayers inoperable. Rear wiper inoperable. Now on to the bigger stuff. First, the battery is four years old. Okay, it's Arizona and we know it's gonna fail sooner than later. Next, the radiator seems to be leaking from a broken fill plug in the top. The transmission cooler line is smashed. This was one I needed some clarification on. He said it appears the previous owner may have dropped the radiator on the line when installing or removing it and that it's created a kink restricting flow and potentially resulting in a failure or diminished cooling capacity. Okay, that's all fine and dandy, and all these things seem like relatively simple fixes that most DIY types could handle on their driveways on the weekend with a small investment of time and money, but none of them explain the elephant in the room. You see, every time you park the Discovery, it leaves a stain on the ground that makes you think it's being driven around by Captain Joseph Hazelwood. It leaks oil, more than any other vehicle I've ever owned. Now, the mechanic did mention a leak in the transfer case, something he then quoted me $1,600 to fix, but said it's not losing enough to require a full repair, just refills at oil change intervals. There's no way I'm laying out that kind of money for a fix that requires $40 worth of gaskets and a free weekend. So what then is the culprit? Well. If you've been sitting here for the last couple of minutes screaming, leaking head gasket at your screen, you're right. It appears it's leaking from the driver's side bank at the very front of the head. That would match up with where I'm seeing the oil spots on the ground. Notice I didn't say blown head gasket. 
Well, that's because it's not technically blown. It's just leaking oil externally and in an amount that's manageable. The mechanic thought I could probably get away with putting the repair off a little while. At the same time, he quoted me somewhere between $2,300 and $3,000 to do the job, depending on some variables. Obviously, paying that kind of money to repair a vehicle that we barely paid more than that for is a hard pill to swallow, and it's not one our budget is ready to handle. However, a complete head gasket kit with the required single-use head bolts will cost me less than $200. Add another 200 to 300 if I need to send those heads off to a machine shop for straightening and or resurfacing. Since we'll have to replace and drain all the engine fluids while we are in there, we might as well spend a few extra dollars for it and do the rest of the major service items like differential, transfer case, and transmission fluids. Realistically, I'm hoping to have this whole project handled for less than $500, $750 if we gotta send the heads out. That's a big difference from what the mechanic quoted me to do it, and it appears to be a job I'm ready and capable of handling. So we're going to get the parts ordered and dive into this project head first. I am planning on filming every repair we can on this rig, and if you'd like to join me on the journey from eBay Jalopy to Solid Budget Overlander, go ahead and subscribe to this channel and be sure to click the notification bell so you never miss a new video. As always, I'm Matt Kester. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Frugal Explorer Dad. Until next time, be good.